Hello, this is the first part of a series of video on engaging online learning. In this video, I'm going to explain to you about the basics of engaging online learning. Well, when we're in the class, have you ever come across what would your students be thinking of your online session? Well, these are in fact could be the things that pop up in your students' minds. So how to make it better? How to make sure that we can deliver better and come up with an engaging online learning session? Well, an effective online student engagement comprises of the combination between emotional, interactive, social, and the course design should be suited to the needs of the students. So the content can tackle them, yet ensuring that the targeted learning outcomes can be achieved. At UPM, we have come up with PRIDE, a guideline on food pride in creative delivery, which um, emphasizes on meaningful learning for the future proof graduates through a design teaching delivery method by a maximum of engaging activities and activities. The engaging educator must ensure that the online delivery is by utilizing various tools and the content is comprises of a clear learning outcome, outcome, some scheduled and various activities, and yet giving constructive feedback for the students to understand and for them to be able to plan on their learning achievements. There are four key elements of teaching experience, which are the environment, learners, knowledge, and mentor. So the players in this ecosystem of learning, each play a role, making sure that the environment on the where, when, whom, and who are in the learning session, make sure the um, learning experience would be a meaningful one. Then the selection of the knowledge on what the students needs to be able to get and what activities as well as the assessment is all designed by the mentor or the uh, instructor. At UPM, we have also given the UPM Virtual Classroom and E-Assessment Guidelines. And we have released um, a guide of what the lecturers needs to do in delivering online learning sessions as well as uh, relevant techniques. We have also uh, inculcated several uh, technology-enhanced learning uh, where some of these tools will be covered in this uh, lecture series. Let's look specifically on how to plan a meaningful lesson. So the keyword here is plan. First, we need to ensure that the objective is clear from the lesson. For example, through this lesson, it is hoped that you would know what are the components for a meaningful lesson. Part of the component is to incorporate visual, visual and more visual. Look at the emphasis that I use these icons and infographics to deliver the messages to you. Then, suitable assignments and homework needs to be given to the students besides the activities that is done in the class during the lesson, synchronous or asynchronously, and then you evaluate, reflect, and revise based on the student's achievements. Let's look further into how to structure the lesson for your online course. First, you need to provide them with the overall journey of where they are. They need to know where they are in this topic, where they are in that lesson, and tell them where they are going. What are the sections in the topic? What are the sections in the specific lesson? Then tell them why and let them see the relevance between what they are seeing now with the previous knowledge. Then try to encourage them to participate in the learning as well. You can do this by sharing your content and by encouraging them to participate in the content by using engaging online activities. There will be a special section on online learning activities in this lecture series. I will also cover on how you can create engaging online content. 
make sure that in each of your lesson you incorporate some breaks so this is a guideline of 10 lesson 10 minutes lesson 5 minutes break 10 minutes lesson with activities and 5 minutes break the 5e instructional model is relevant so in this case the 5e lesson format consists of engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. Where in each of the phases, there are activities for you to let the students to engage with the lesson and engage also with you and with the other peers. Then, you let them to explore further. This is by using several tools such as Jamboard, or using mind mapping or even doing scaven internet scavenger hunt. Then, the third is to let them to explain. After they have done their activities, you can use tools such as Flipgrid to let them to communicate what they have learned. You can also use the uh, Mentimeter as well as the simple chat box in the virtual classroom to let them to reflect what they know. After that, you can elaborate and encourage them to elaborate what they know from uh, the small groups or even the whole class by using fish, um, the fishbowl technique or buzz group. Then evaluate what they know by a reflecting face, either by using quizzes to give them quiz or just ask them to write their 3 to 1 reflection on what they have obtained in that lesson. This is another example on how you can structure that. First, you can state what are the activities, what the students need to do, what the teacher does, the concepts that they can learn in each of these five e phases, and the evidence gathered. You evaluate what you have planned for them by using these questions. You look into whether it has provided the students opportunity to explore, investigate, and explain the phenomenon. And then, whether it helps the students to demonstrate their learning of outcomes and goals. And then, you can ask the students to demonstrate and explain the phenomenon. And whether your plan has ensured access for learning to all the students. The examples are as shown here. For each of these stages in the 5E, what are the activities that can be done and the examples of tools. For UPM, we have provided tutorials for you to use Putra Blast, our blended learning assistive system and technology, for you to, um, to uh, design your online uh, course using our learning management system. We have also provided tutorials to use the Moodle system in the YouTube, and so that you know what to use in the learning management system and utilize all these functions to the benefits of your online learning session. Again, the steps to design learning consist of number one, to know what is the learning outcome and then state and define as well as plan and inform them how the learning will be assessed, how long is the learning time, how they can communicate with each of their peers, whether the activities will be carried out individually or collaboratively or both, the technologies that they need to use and you need to provide examples with them and guide them and provide links for example and provide to them demonstration as well. Then, you have to consider also how you will get the learner's feedback either by using quizzes or by reflection as I mentioned earlier. Make sure you are compassionate and always listen as well as providing scaffold to motivate the engagement for the students. In the Moodle, these are the uh, components that you can use which are divided into the content, activities, assess and assessment. So that you can decorate in your learning um, management system using Moodle. This is an example from my course. This is from the module number two. We provide some instructions and infographic to um, summarize about the module two, provide some descriptions so the students have some idea on what is provided inside this. And then this infographic allows them to get a clear cut and some overview on what is being emphasized in this module or chapter or topic. 
Then from there, you can arrange the learning materials. The lecture notes can be up, uh, downloaded by the students. And then some of the activities can be accessed by the students. Then you provide extra materials. For example, the URL and provide also link to the quizzes and the self-assessment as well as some extra reading. You can use also the function on completion tracking to get um, to easily track whether the students have completed all these uh, learning sessions. So, as a completion for this part, the best practices on engaging online learning comprises of these seven things. Number one, make sure that you are present digitally. So, whether it is by the synchronous, the meeting session, or it is the WhatsApp where you do asynchronous um, communication with your students, as well as in the learning management system, put some words to explain to them what the learning session is about. Then, the community of inquiry, which consists of the knowledge, the students, and you yourself. Provide also some clear expectations on what the students need to do in that specific lesson or topic for them to know where they are in the course and where they are going. Conduct good instructional practices as I have provided earlier by using 5E or some guide of lesson planning. Make sure that you use active learning with suitable tools and provide personalized feedback so the students will know what they need to do and will be motivated to engage further in your course and use the technology intentionally. That's all for the first part. See you next one. Thank you.